I was 17 when it happened. I saw the thread on Twitter about people texting their number neighbor and I thought it was pretty funny. Now, mind you, I was not much of a sociable guy, so I didn't jump on it right away. I had friends, of course, but I was what everyone would call a shut-in. I didn't go out on Friday nights to party with my friends, or at least not in the way normal average high schoolers do. I remained at home and had a LAN party instead with them, whereas we played a game together until the wee hours in the morning. I lived on monster energy drinks and sun chips. It was a good life. I didn't realize how lonely it was until one of our friends, well, they left the group because he'd met a girl. We were happy for him, but the dynamic wasn't the same. We had fewer game nights. Another guy in our group found a new passion for D&D and made new friends. And slowly but surely, our game group was dissolved and my game nights with friends turned into solo nights. It got lonely really quick. So, as I was browsing Twitter, five or six months after the initial release of the number neighbors game or meme or whatever you want to call it, I saw another post about it on my feed. And this time, I didn't think twice. I mean, what would be the harm anyway? The worst case scenario is that I didn't have any number neighbors or that they just wouldn't answer. The best case scenario, well, I would get to meet someone new, whom I had no idea even existed in my realm outside of being my number neighbor. I started with the number below mine and texted a quick, Hi, number neighbor. And I got a quick answer, but not the one I expected. I don't have time for your games. I'm blocking you. Well, okay then. Someone was in a bad mood or wasn't as much of a fine meme connoisseur as I was. It's a shame. I hope my other number neighbor would be more intrigued by this. And I sent another, Hi, number neighbor. Smiley face emoji. And dropped my phone on the bed. I was just going to take a quick shower and be back. Hopefully to a message or two by my number neighbor. Twenty minutes later, I was rubbing my towel in my hair when I picked up my phone. I had six missed messages. Well, hopefully my number neighbor didn't go into a rant about how it was rude to text random strangers and that I needed a better hobby. Uh, please don't let it be a boomer's rant. I crossed my fingers as I pressed my digit to the button to unlock my phone. Miracle. It wasn't a rant. I was elated. I felt my cheeks tingle and the corner of my lips stretch as I read the messages. There were four messages and two pictures. <laughs> it must have been my lucky day. The girl answered with a quick, Hi, number neighbor, and three exclamation points. I was almost wondering why she didn't contact me first, seeing how excited she was about the whole thing. Then an emoji, and then her name, Sarah, and then two pictures. I could tell she was a little older than me, but she was beautiful in every way. Beautiful brown hair with soft curls at the end, almond-shaped eyes, and a bright smile that would do well on a Colgate ad. I couldn't believe my luck. Anyway, I read the two messages following where she asked me my name and then asked for a picture as well. I realized that I didn't have a selfie. I wasn't that kind of guy, but who was I to deny her? Before I would reply anything, though, I was definitely going to take one. And so, there I was in all my naked glory, bending my slim body in an awkward angle to make my muscles bulge a little. I spent at least 30 minutes in front of the mirror, trying to hold my breath and have my chest look harder than stone. I eventually just gave up and took a picture of my face, but at a safe distance so that she couldn't see my tiny, tiny zits sitting on my chin. I was one of the lucky ones who didn't have a lot of acne, but I still had tiny red dots here and there. 
Hi, number neighbor. Sorry it took so long. I was in the shower and forgot to check my phone when I got out. It had nearly been an hour since her last message. My name's David. Here's a quick pic I took just for you. Simple enough, and it didn't let on that I squeezed myself for almost 30 minutes to take a good pic for her. She responded back. Why didn't you take one of the 40 you took in front of the mirror? Winky face emoji. My blood turned to ice, and for a second, I was legitimately wondering if someone had been watching me. Then I received another quick text. My heart was in a vice, but this loosened the tension a little. Damn, girls were a bit too quick for me. Just kidding. Most people try to take a lot of pics before sending one. I had to scroll down my gallery to find two I actually liked for you. <laughs> she nearly gave me a heart attack. I texted back. I was about to ask how you knew about that. Well, I could have been watching from the window, you know, she said. My eyes instinctively went to my window. It was late, and it was dark, and my room was on the second floor. Plus, there are a lot of trees around my house, so unless she actually climbed the tree, sat on a branch, and stared with binoculars through my window, she couldn't see me. The stalker humor did put me off a little bit, though. And just then, she sent another picture, so I quickly forgot about it. Sure, from the second floor. Good luck, Sarah. I sent a laughing, crying emoji to try to distend the atmosphere, and to try to move on and change the subject. I think I was asking her about her age, but it didn't seem like she wanted to drop the subject. Instead of moving on like someone normal, she commented about how some people were pretty good to climb, and said that she could be hanging by the tip of her fingers on the windowsill right now. She was pretty, but uh, her sense of humor was kind of weird. I sent back a polite ha-ha, quickly realizing that texting my number neighbor wasn't as fun as I expected. It was time to cut it off. I told her that it was late and that I was tired, but that it had been a pleasure to get to know my number neighbor. I said something vague about her having a good life and ended with a nice goodbye, Sarah, to make sure she understood I was putting an end to this conversation forever. And after that, I turned off my phone notifications and dropped my phone on my night table and went to go play Black Desert for the rest of the evening until late into the night. It was way past 2am when I finally got off my PC and prepared for bed. I brushed my teeth and did my nightly routine and came back to bed, but not without getting to my phone first. When I unlocked it, I had 64 new messages. 63 of which were from my number neighbor, and one from my mom imploring me not to go to bed too late. Oops, sorry mom. My first thoughts were, damn, this is crazy. Who has time to text another person 63 times? I wanted just to trash them all and go to bed, block the number and move on. As much fun as Twitter made it seem, my two experiences with my number neighbors didn't go in the best direction. The first one was rude, the second one was outright crazy. I started reading the messages before trashing them, but the more I read, the more uncomfortable I became. She talked about herself at first and completely ignored that I told her goodbye and ended the discussion. Then, she freaked out about me not answering when she knew I was still awake. I felt my hair stand on end when I read that she wanted me to stop playing Black Desert and ignoring my phone notifications. And then, the 64th message from her arrived. It was a picture of my house. Now, mind you, I'm 17. I'm wearing my Spider-Man boxers in bed at almost 3am. 
Everyone in the house is asleep, and I've got a weird lady who somehow found my house and decided to take a picture of it in real time. I finally texted her back, telling her to back off where I was going to call the police. That the shit wasn't funny, and that the number neighbor was just a meme and she needed to get a life. Probably not the smartest thing to say to someone who's taking pictures of your home, but she was a girl, and I was a boy, and I thought the worst case scenario was that she was going to egg my house. I would explain to my mom the next day and show the 60-something messages we exchanged that I didn't do anything wrong. Or so I thought. Apparently, she thought that me ignoring her was the absolute worst and that she hated being ignored. She took another picture and sent it to me. I stood from my bed in an instant, cold sweat dripping down the length of my back. There was a branch tapping my window in the background, but I couldn't hear it with how fast blood was rushing to my head, slamming against my eardrums repeatedly. My throat was tight and my heart felt like it wanted to leap out of my chest. She was standing by my mom's bed and took a picture of my sleeping mom before sending it to me. She was in the house. I couldn't scream even if I wanted to. I feared the worst, but I knew she was one floor down. I got in my closet and pulled the baseball bat out when my phone vibrated against my bed. Another picture, this time of the hallway next to my door. She was there. She was on the other side of my door waiting for me to open it. Did she have a weapon? How did she even get into my house and what was going to happen to us? Was it too late to call the cops? And how much time do I have? All these questions rushed through me and I held tight onto my baseball bat. Muscles so tight I would probably have cramps the next day. It all became too much and I felt like I was going to shit myself. And then it happened very fast, just like in the movies. I saw the door handle shake, heard the noise of it being twisted very slowly. I moved toward the door and held the bat up, ready to swing it at a moment's notice. I held my breath for God knows how long. I didn't even notice I was holding it until the bat came crashing against her skull with a sickening, cracking noise. I slammed my baseball bat down on her ribs to release some adrenaline, and I felt my whole body turn to cotton. My body temperature rose exponentially and dropped just as fast, making me nauseous. I could see the blood on the ground soaking the carpeting of my floor. I took a step back and called the cops, saying that I'd knocked out an intruder in my room with a baseball bat. As I called, I jumped over her body and rushed downstairs to check on my mom. God, my mom, I hope that she was okay. I hope there wasn't anything wrong with her, and I hope that that crazy girl didn't do anything to her. And all I wanted was to reach my mother's room and get out of the house as soon as possible. I wasn't sure if I'd killed her or knocked her out. I knew there was blood, but with a baseball bat to the head, everyone would be bleeding. Plus, I was boosted with adrenaline, so even if I'm just a weak gamer boy, well, she had to be out of it, right? When I entered my mother's room, I fell on my knees. My mother wasn't in bed. I heard the police sirens in the background and the world around me started to spin. I climbed the stairs back up to the second floor very slowly and it felt like an out-of-body experience. All along, I prayed to heaven and hell that I hadn't just killed my mother. By the time I reached her body, I already knew what I was going to find. In a puddle of her own blood was my mother, her leg twitching here and there and I barely had time to turn my head that I vomited in the nearest pot plant I saw. My phone vibrated again as the police came in and found us. I checked it from the corner of my eyes. 
I told you I hated being ignored. I hurled again and threw my phone away from me as it burned in my hand. I started crying like a baby as they got my mother on a stretcher and carried her off to the hospital. The cops, well, they tried to talk to me, but I was too shocked to respond. I was taken to the police station and spent the night completely panicking about what had just happened. I had hit my mom with a baseball bat because of a goddamned crazy stalker. I only started to calm down five or six hours later when someone confirmed my mom wasn't dead. She had severe cranial trauma, but she was going to survive. I broke down in tears again and started telling my story. They called the officers on site, and they, fortunately, retrieved my phone, which corroborated my story. I went to the hospital to care for my mother until she woke up and apologized to her profusely. But she wasn't going to get out of the hospital before another couple of days, and I wasn't going to leave her bedside. And I knew that that girl was out there somewhere. That is, until the officers finally gave me some unsettling answers about my number neighbor. My number neighbor wasn't supposed to be an activated number. Its last owner had died over a year ago in a murder-suicide after a lover's quarrel. Apparently, she was a girl who hated to be ignored.